Warm welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday the 6th of January and we want to look at where Omicron came from today. Now we left off with this uh, picture at the last of the end of the last video. So we see that there's various mutants here, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, that arose from this original strain here. This original strain is the B111, the original Wuhan strain. Then that evolved into Delta, but we see that Omicron's on a completely different lineage. So Omicron did not evolve from Delta. So where did it come from? How come we have it? And why is there such a long line there with a mystery unknown past of Omicron? Which makes it really quite intriguing. Now, um, Omicron first identified South Africa 24th of November, as we know, diverged from the B111 line. That's this original line here. It diverged from that mid-2020. So that's the estimate that it diverged roughly in mid-2020. Uh, but where has it been and what has it been doing since then, of course, is really quite intriguing. Now, uh, Omicron does have mutations which are not found in alpha, beta, gamma or delta. It has mutations which are not found in cro people chronically infected with sars coronavirus 2 Separate mutations, unique to Omicron. And the B11 B11 variant shows the highest sequence similarity to Omicron. So there it is. It's it's most similar to this original Wuhan variant and not to other ones. Now, another interesting thing is how quickly mutations occur. Normal rate of uh, mutations in the spike protein RNA. There's about normally about 0.5 mutations per month. But during, the time, during missing time for Omicron, there was 27 mutations accumulated in the spike protein. Now, this bit where the history of Omicron is unknown is called branch O. So this is branch O here, the sort of hidden past of Omicron that just seemed to spring out of nowhere. We don't know where it came from. Um, but it accumulated mutations quickly. So instead of 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.45 mutations per month, it averaged 1.5 mutations per month. Very high rate of mutations, three and a half times faster than the average rate of other variants. So where has it been? And why did it accumulate these mutations so quickly? Well, the first hypothesis is that Omicron could have cryptically spread and circulated in a population with low levels of testing. So, for example, did it originate in a, uh, an African population, for example, where people were simply not tested? So it grew and evolved in people, but it was never discovered because the people weren't tested. It's possible, but that doesn't explain why the mutation rate was particularly high. So that's the first hypothesis there. Uh, I, could have happened, but doesn't seem likely because it doesn't explain the fast mutation rate. Second hypothesis, Omicron could have evolved in a chronically infected person with COVID-19. Now, this is what we'd thought. So if someone is chronically infected with COVID-19, that they've got a compromised immune system and the virus will keep evolving to evade the limited amount of immune response that person is able to generate. And that is that is a reasonable that is a reasonable idea. So uh, second hypothesis that it evolved in a chronically infected person and arose in Africa. So, for example, did it arise in someone with HIV who's got chronic immunosuppression? That is possible. So we don't I don't think that one's likely, but this one's possible. But the third hypothesis is Omicron could have accumulated mutations in a non-human host and then jumped back to humans. In other words, it could be from animals. So this original Wuhan strain could have got into an, an animal group, or this mutation here could have occurred as time went on in an animal group. And of course, we don't keep surveillance of all the animals in the world, so we wouldn't possibly have known that. It could have mutated away quite happily under the human radar and then just reappeared. And this is what I think is most likely. And this leads us on to this paper here. Now, peer-reviewed paper, um, Journal of Genetics and Genomics, and it's all there. Now, to be quite honest, uh, this is not an easy read. <laughs> In fact, anything but. It took me a long time to 
wade through this and work out what it was uh, talking about. But when you do, I must say it does seem to hang together and it has been already peer reviewed. So it's likely to be a, a fairly good quality paper. But as I say, not an easy read. But let's try and summarise what it says. The likely candidate is mice. Now, the other candidates that were similar were uh, camels, because we do know that uh, Middle East respiratory syndrome comes from camels. And the other animals that were possible were, were actually goats. But mice were way out in head as the, head as the most likely contender. So did this mystical um, long-term mutation pattern occur in mice in Africa? Uh, this long line of mystery times here for Omicron. Did it occur in mice in Africa? It's, that's the most likely scenario, actually, at the moment. So the rapid accumulation of mutations in Omicron. So it was rapid, more rapid than it would occur in humans. So that means animals are a real possibility. Proximal origins occurred in human or uh, another mammalian host. So the proximal origins is the recent origins. The distal origins, of course is in uh, Wuhan, which we're probably never going to get anything definitive on, unfortunately, where it came originally. But this is about where the Omicron came from, given that we already had this SARS coronavirus too. Omicron's got 45 point mutations that, that Omicron acquired since diverging from the B11 lineage. In other words, there's 45 point mutations that have occurred along here. And as we said, they occurred fairly uh, quickly. Let's carry on with the line of uh, argument. S significantly different from the spectrum uh, for viruses that evolved in human patients. So the mutations that evolved in or the mutations that are present in Omicron are different mutations to those that evolved in humans to give rise to the human derived uh, variants that we know of. This does seem to be something different. Omicron spike protein sequence Strongly positive selection, strongest positive selection than any other previous variant. In other words, this is being positively selected for, for in evolutionary terms, which, as we've seen, this has gone from nothing to dominant in a very, very short period of time. So this is this is this has got such a massive evolutionary advantage compared to any other virus for spread in humans. And that suggests the possibility of host jumping, that it could have jumped from a host such as a mouse into a human. Now, uh, resembled the spectra of associations with virus uh, evolution in a mouse cellular environment. Now, what, what this means is in mice, there's a particular set of mutations which the mouse makes more likely to occur. And they are the mutations that are there in Omicron. And as well as that, the mutations that are there on Omicron are the mutations which would make the binding into the mouse ACE2 receptor, which, of course, is how the virus gets into the cell. The, the spike protein mutations on Omicron fit very, very well, almost perfectly, into the ACE2 receptors in mice. Now, as I said, the paper wasn't a simple read. And the chemistry behind this was complicated. But that's the bottom line, that the Omicron mutation, it's as if it's been designed or evolved to fit in to the mouse ACE2 receptor uh, specifically. So um, mutations in the Omicron spike protein significantly overlapping with SARS coronavirus 2 mutations known to promote adaptation to mouse hosts. So it fits into the mouse ACE2 receptors really quite nicely. Through enhanced spike protein binding affinity for the mouse cell entry receptor which is the mostly the ACE2 receptor. So it seems like this Omicron mutant is particularly adapted to fit into mice receptors. So we're putting it all together now aren't we? We've got suitable for fitting into mice receptors, we've got the long time gap without being known, we've got the fact that it didn't evolve from the human mutant at the time which was, or the human variant at the time which was Delta, but it is very similar to the original one so it looks like it jumped from the a human infected with a fairly original variant, evolved in mice and then jumped back to humans. Really quite intriguing isn't it, is what this paper thinks. So uh, where does that leave us? Omicron jumped from humans to mice way back in early 2020. That's quite possible. 
rapid accumulation of mutations conductor and conductive conducive to infect mice uh, that is what's happened if we know that from the nature of the mutations then jump back into humans indicating an interspecies evolutionary trajectory of the omicron outbreak you might call this a kind of um, reverse zoonosis from humans into animals and then a sort of secondary infective zoonosis from the mice back into the humans fortunately as the virus evolved in mice it evolved to uh, increasing binding to mouse ACE2 receptors. Of course, that's what the evolutionary pressures would exactly suggest. That's why it's consistent with human immune escape because the human response is designed against uh, the, the wild type for, for the vaccines, particularly the Delta type for people that have been exposed but in, in, uh, it's consistent with the human escape and it's consistent with the upper air, air, airway adsorption of the virus. So two separate points there, consistent with human immune escape, consistent with the upper airway adsorption. Now, suppose this had gone into another animal that uh, caused mutations to fit into that animal's um, ACE2 receptor that meant that the Omicron variant was more likely to infect human lung tissue than infect human upper airway tissue. Then this Omicron variant would have jumped back into humans, but would have been more likely to cause more severe pneumonia rather than the upper airway infection it's currently causing. Then we could have been in trouble. So aren't we fortunate that it went into mice? That the nature of the receptor in the mice means that the virus, the Omicron, would escape the human immune system that it would spread through all out humans generating large amounts of immunity but yet does not cause significant pathology in humans and that is purely good luck that it's not causing a five percent a ten percent a twenty percent case fatality rate in humans because middle east respiratory syndrome does it kills about 40 percent of the people that it infects the reason it's not a big problem other than direct spread from camels is because it doesn't spread very far doesn't spread quickly so it's quite uncanny really that we've got something that's spreading rapidly causing massive community herd immunity in humans and yet causing low levels of pathogenicity because it so happens that low levels of human pathogenicity are associated with good evolutionary adaptation to the, the mouse ace 2 receptor hope that made some sense because it it really is quite quite weird that the way that's happened so there you go uh it looks most likely that this evolutionary process occurred in mice ending up with the omicron that we now have and uh it's jumped back into humans from mice uh, now, this is the only paper I found on this, so we don't know this for sure yet, but it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Oh, um, there is a slight piece of extra information I want to give you here. Uh, the science here was done at the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, but to be fair, it did not say anything about the original viral origins, nothing at all. It's entirely about the origin of Omicron, and it has been peer-reviewed. Now, of course... That's the end of that bit. So we, we looked at uh, Tim Spector's data about the symptoms of uh, Omicron in the UK, often presenting as a common cold. And, and this, is, this is the most common presentation. So uh, we, 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 know, we know that now. But it's, I'm getting a lot of reports from uh, people who've actually had Omicron and actually been a bit ill with it. So although the common cold is the most common presentation, other people are getting other features. So I just want to give a, a letter here from, from Wim in South Africa. Uh, Wim writes, uh, in South Africa, most people I know, including myself, had COVID in December. So basically it spread throughout all of South Africa in December, the same way it's spreading through all of the UK and all of the United States in January. Uh, Wynne said it spread through young and old, vaxxed and unvaxxed. It just ramped through the whole, romped through the whole country. 
a good mix of overweight and people with type 2 diabetes and all the people that we know had mild cases. Mild dose does not being does not mild dose does not mean not being ill at all or just sniffles. Wynne had body aches, fatigue, runny nose, sore throat, and uh, he actually had the, the loss of smell as well, and actually felt pretty ropey for a few days. So it wasn't mild in that he didn't feel ill. He was well uh, knocked off for a few days. Wynne said, he, um, I didn't have headaches, but I've never been prone to headaches. Most people, though, did have headaches, and often quite severe headaches. I felt okay at times, but very tired at other times. I used aspirin on and off every evening because the body aches were so severe. He couldn't sleep because of the body aches. So mildness does not mean in his circle, which is quite extensive and he's talked to a lot of people in South Africa. Uh, mild, mildness does not mean that people aren't a bit ill with it, it, but they do have short duration over in three or four days. So it seems to be short lived. Only one elderly relative was considered by a doctor for admission, but eventually wasn't and was better the next day after new medications and uh, completely over it in two days. So people getting over it quickly, but quite ill for two or three days in many cases. In many households, one or two members never develop symptoms. So because it's in household, it's definitely spreading in the household. But some people must have got the infection completely asymptomatically or didn't get the infection at all. So even though it was in households, even though it's massively transmissible, you've got some people in households who weren't very well, other people who never develop symptoms. In some households, only the adults showed meaningful symptoms, others only the children showed meaningful symptoms. In South Africa, vitamins D2, not too much of a problem, uh, with, uh, because there's lots of sunshine. Uh, many other people, friends, relatives, people from elsewhere, did not know where they got it from. So they got it, but couldn't work out where they got it from. Friends who got it included those who had been extremely cautious and not been out and about. Um, it did seem people, even people that were lying low, were not spared. They still got the infection because it's so transmissible. Most did not get tested, but those who did showed at least one household member positive and yet other members in the household didn't get it. So yes, real infections would have been factors, many factors, more than reported, of course. I can't report that I know uh, nobody ill with it at the moment. So I can report that I don't know anyone who's ill with it at the moment. So the sharp drop in the curve in the number of cases in South Africa is consistent with Wynne's experience. Um, the friends and relatives whose experience I refer to are all over South Africa. So we're seeing people often get ill. So yes, these are the most common features, the common cold features. But some people are getting ill for a few days. Uh, although they do seem to bounce back pretty quickly. So this is what we can all expect in the fairly near future. Um, now that poster there says stop COVID-19, doesn't it? I don't think we can stop COVID-19. We can't stop the Omicron variant. It's going to be everywhere. Everyone's going to be exposed to Omicron. So we actually can't stop it. So I think that post is a little bit out of date now. Now I'm not saying we need to stop wearing masks. We do need to keep wearing masks. We do need to keep social distancing because even though everyone's going to get it, we want us to get it over a longer period of time rather than a shorter period of time. So the tiny proportion of people that are hospitalized are spread out over a longer period of time. That remains true. But I think I think it's inaccurate for that poster to say stop her COVID-19 actually now. So uh, I think we'll probably. Uh... Probably move that one. Oh, look, there's another poster behind it. And as soon as I work out what all those squiggles mean up there, I'll. Uh... I'll tell you what they mean. I should have worked it out by tomorrow. Okay, so um, we can't stop Omicron. It's going to be everywhere. And it probably came from mice. Isn't that it? I just find that absolutely fascinating. And the fact that this could be our way out of the pandemic is not because we've been clever, but because the virus went into mice and then came back again. 
uh, if, as a human being that doesn't humble you uh, I don't think you've fully understood what we've been talking about in this video but I'm sure most of you have therefore you will feel humbled by that uh, as indeed do uh, do I thank you for watching